It's 1984, and you're a group of two French-Canadian street performers and fire breathers, Guy Lalibert and Giles Stecroy, and you decide to start your own traveling circus. You probably wouldn't imagine you'd redefine the culture of live performances forever. Most of you know Cirque du Soleil for their avant-garde choreography and dangerous acrobatics that defy belief. But did you know that the company is currently on the ropes? Just a few days ago, executive vice chairman and former CEO Daniel Lamar revealed how in recent years they went from a billion dollars of revenue to zero. COVID restrictions, heavy debts, mass layoffs, the future of the Cirque du Soleil seems to be hanging by a thread. Their journey is indeed a spectacular one. In 1979, Lalibert and Stacroy, the two founders, met when they were living in the small city of Bas saint paul in the province of Quebec, Canada. Both in their 20s, they were part of a ragtag group of artists with whom they entertained people by dancing, juggling, and breathing fire on the streets. Both of them wanted to start their own touring company, but none of them had any funds whatsoever to do it. So, you're Stacroy, a talented stilt walker, and what do you do? In order to get support, you decide to walk on stilts for about 90 kilometers, 56 miles, all the way from by St. Paul to Quebec City. And voila, it was incredible to say the least. This gave him the notoriety and a $60,000 grant that he needed to start. In the next four years, thanks to government programs, they started different ventures like the Les Echers and the Club de Talents Hauts, or the Club of the High Heels, but all of them failed financially. Nothing seemed to work until 1983. The Canadian government finally recognized their efforts and gave them a grant of $1.6 million to organize the 450th celebration of the discovery of Canada by Jacques Cartier. And that's how the following year, 1984, the Cirque du Soleil, literally the Circus of the Sun, was created for their first performance, the Grand Tour. It was striking and magical, except for a few episodes, like breaking their own tent. But it was different from anything else people had ever seen before. What made it so great? Circus is an art that's almost as old as the first civilizations. For the longest time, families of performers walked the earth, across countries and continents, to entertain people with their talents, their tricks, theatricality, and courage. We know that already in ancient Egypt, they had jugglers for entertainment, while in ancient Rome, public spectacles were part of popular culture, such as reenactments of landmark battles at the Circus Maximum, or shows with ferocious animals and warriors at the Colosseum. How's the Cirque du Soleil different? If I asked you what circus means to you, you'd probably mention the usual ringmasters, elephants, and tamed lions. Well, forget about all that. First of all, the Cirque got rid of animals. No more shows with wild beasts where the spectators would wait for the occasional roar or accident. Their shows focused only on exceptional talent trained to the highest standard acrobats that fly in the air 30 meters high, hoopers and hair-raising tightrope walkers, and some of them are actually former Olympians. Secondly, over the years, they redesigned the use of space when they decided to move on from the traditional circus ring. Instead, they often adopted the theater stage, called proscenium, as if it were a play or an opera. This element is more important than you think. In fact, being placed in front of the artists rather than all around them, psychologically, it feels like you're attending a theatrical performance rather than just circus. Also, the separation creates a sense of admiration for the performers, while it allows the artists to better control the act by hiding their tricks and props behind the stage. The third innovation, and perhaps the greatest, is the introduction of storytelling. In fact, Instead of just relying on amazement and awe, they looked at places like Broadway and cinema for inspiration and decided to introduce a character-driven narrative. For instance, Totem, which tells the birth of humankind, or Lucia, the Mexican-inspired folktale. 
every show is different because there are protagonists and antagonists that play along with the choreography and original music. So, if so successful, how did the company end up in deep water? One answer is certainly the pandemic. COVID has been a nightmare for live events, but there are a few other aspects to consider. After their inception in 1984, for the next three decades, the Cirque literally took flight. They created one show after the other, bringing in theater directors like Franco Dragon to combine theater with circus. They toured the U.S. for the first time in 1987, and in 1990, they had their first overseas tour in Europe, gathering notoriety and distinct admirers like Princess Diana. Soon, they saw the potential of having permanent shows, and they planted their flag in Las Vegas with their first resident act, Mystery, in 1993 now an institution on the Las Vegas Strip. But what all these elements have in common is that they're extremely expensive. Their production costs span from $50 million to over $160 million per production, which, to get an idea, is more than double the cost of Broadway's most expensive musical, Spider-Man. The consequence? The Cirque has been heavily in debt for years, long before the pandemic. In fact, Already in March 2020, the company had over $900 million of debt. The company tried to diversify and seek other revenue sources, like digital and streaming shows. But the truth seems to be that it's a model that requires several cash injections to sustain. Then there was a change of control. In 2014, Stecroy retired, and the following year, the other co-founder, Lalibert, sold his stake to American and Chinese private equity firms and banks for $1.5 billion. The new management didn't do very well, with many shows already closed way before the pandemic. Plus, they owed over $1.5 million to circus performers for work they did in the past year. Not very good for their employees. It was the end of an era. In an interview in 2020, Stacroy, one of the two founders, claimed with regret that the company had lost its way since their departure and blamed the new owners for this, and even proposed to get together with Lalibert and buy it back. Then, of course, with the pandemic, things got even worse. The new owners had to lay off nearly 4,700 employees, almost 95% of the workers, and through a video call. So, with zero revenues, they filed for bankruptcy protection. At the moment, the Cirque is managing to stay afloat with some acrobatics. Their former CEO for 21 years, Daniel Lamar, genuinely thought that the company was over, especially when on March 13, 2020, 71 circus shows were instantly canceled. The vast majority is still shut down and won't be reopened until 2023. The company managed to rehire some of the laid off employees and to step out from the bankruptcy protection. It's reasonable to think that this institution will survive, but how live performances will exist in the post-COVID world is still unclear, especially if we think that the Cirque du Soleil's high costs and bad management caused many troubles already before 2020. So there might still be many dark clouds ahead of us. Maybe for a company that started with a 90-kilometer walk on stilts, all it takes is a fresh new stunt. <laughs>